with Mr. Thomas. Let's go! Here is chapter 8, lesson number 4, solving quadratic equations. Now, solving quadratics is something that we have been doing for a number of years. And what you're probably thinking is, there's actually quite a number of ways to solve a quadratic. So what I thought I would do is put together a lesson where I'm showing you the different methods that we can now use to solve quadratics. Let's take it then right back to the start. So to solve a quadratic means to find the value or values of x when y is equal to zero. Now the different ways that we have come across that you can do that, first of all, you can easily look at the parabola. So if you graph the quadratic, you can see the values where the graph crosses the x axis. In other words, you're finding the roots. You can also factorize your quadratic in order to solve it. Something else you could use is the quadratic formula. Oh yeah. And you can also use completing the square. So you can complete the square, you can use quadratic formula, you can factorize it, or you can use the graph. So I'll do an example of each one. Something that we've not really done is using completing the square. So I'll do a couple of examples with that. So let's go for example number one. Here is the graph of y equals x squared minus 2x minus 15. Solve x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. This one is probably the easiest example in the entire world because all you do is you look at the graph and you just want to see where the graph crosses the x-axis. Because you know on the x-axis it's when y is equal to 0 and that's what it means to solve a quadratic. So the, this graph here crosses at negative 3 and it crosses at 5. So really your solution is just going to be x equals negative 3 and x equals 5. So first method is just to look at the graph to see where it crosses the x-axis. Example number two. Solve 6x squared plus x minus 15 equals 0 by factorizing. Depending on who your teacher is, you may have been taught factorizing different ways. It doesn't matter which way you do it, as long as you get the same answer. What I'll do is I'll show you how I would do it, and then hopefully you get the same line here, and then I'll show you what you would do after that. So the first thing to do is to factorise. I would take the 6x squared plus x uh, minus 15, and just think, what would I get if I factorise that? Now to do that, there's no highest common factor. It's definitely not a difference of two squares, so I'd multiply the 6 and the negative 15 together. If I do that... I get negative 90. What I then do is think about factors of 90. So numbers that multiply to give 90. You'd have 1 times 90. You could have 2 times 45. 3 times 30. 5 times 18. 6 times 15. 9 times 10. You want to find a pair of numbers that you can multiply to give negative 90. So you know if you multiply, let's say 9 and 10, one of the numbers must be a negative. Or 6 and 15, again, one of the numbers must be a negative. But what you want to do is you want to find a pair that will multiply to give 90, but will add to give 1, because we've got 1x. So it's that coefficient. So obviously if you do negative 1 add 90, or 1 take away 90, it's not going to give you 1. The only possible answer there would be 9 and 10. And again, one of them has to be a negative. If you do 9 take away a 10, you would get negative 1, but we just want 1. So you'd have to do negative 9 add 10. 10. So what you do is you would then go back up here and you've got 6x squared, leave that as it is, but instead of writing plus 1x, write minus 9x and plus 10x. Because all you're doing is you're rewriting the 1x as negative 9x add 10x. From there, take out the first two terms and factorise them. Then you would factorise the last two terms. So factorising the first two, just looking at that, you've got highest common factor of 3x, so you've got 3x bracket. Um, inside the brackets, you'd have 2x and then a minus 3. The plus just drops down, and then you look at these last couple of terms. Highest common factor there is 5, so 5 comes outside the brackets. And 5 times what is 10x? Well, it's 2x. 5 times what is negative 15? Well, it's negative 3. What you'll notice is that every time you use this method, the brackets will be the same. If they're not, you've made a mistake. Therefore, you can take out the 2x take 3 as a common factor, and you're left with a 3x 
plus five. So the brackets will be one of your answers, and then whatever's outside, here you've got three x and a plus five, though that just goes in the other side. That's how I would factorize that. After that though, you're wanting to solve that equals zero by factorizing, so you know if you factorize that's what you would get. So then say that three x plus five and 2x take 3 would equal 0. Make sure you put in that equal 0 when you're factorizing it. Okay, so just go off to the side, factorize it, and see what you would get, and then you're going back over here. From there, once it's factorized, you know that in order to multiply to get 0, either that would equal 0, or that would equal 0. Solving each of these equations then, 3x would equal negative 5, x would equal negative 5 over 3, and if you solve this one, add 3 to both sides, divide by 2, x would equal 3 over 2. So you're getting your two answers. So that is how you'd solve it by factorizing. Example 3, use a quadratic formula to solve 3x squared plus 7x plus 1 equals 0. Remember your quadratic formula. This is it here that's dancing about. Woo! Take the coefficients of x squared x and the number on its own. So you've got how many x squared? 3. How many x's? 7. Number on its own? And all you want to do is you want to substitute those values in for a, b, and c. So you will end up getting that. Negative b becomes negative 7, plus or minus the square root of 7 squared minus 4 times 3 times 1. Over 2a, which is 2 times 3. Simplify that. Well, underneath the brackets, you'd have 49 minus 12, which gives you 37. So you've got negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 37 over 6. Remember the plus or minus, just split that up. So it means you would have either negative seven plus the square root or negative seven minus the square root. And again, you get two answers. From there, you would just sub that into your calculator and that is what you would get. So negative 0 0.15 or negative 2.18. Again, this should be a revision. Okay, we've done this in the past before. Next example, this is something that we haven't done yet, so I'm doing two examples with this. So solving quadratics by completing the square. So x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. So to solve that by completing the square, we have to complete the square first of all. So remember, to complete the square, we wanted x plus or minus the number, all squared. So to do that, the x plus or minus some number, well the number is going to be half the coefficient of x. So here, we'd have an x minus 1, because if you have negative 2, you get negative 1. Remember your correction number, if you square 1, take it off, so we're taking away 1, and leave the negative 4 just as it is. If you've forgotten completing the square, look back in the lessons, it was a few lessons ago. Negative 1, take 4, is negative 5, so that is what you would get. From there, you want to solve it for x, so add 5 to both sides, or move the 5 over, and x minus 1 all squared would equal 5, from there, we're wanting to get down to x, so the first thing you'd have to do is undo the square. And to undo the square, you take the square root. So take the square root of both sides, so x plus 1 would equal root 5. But remember, when you take the square root, it'll be plus or minus. Make sure you don't forget that. Um, after that, what that means is you're going to have the square root of 5, or minus root 5. And then add 1 to both of these answers, you're going to have root 5 plus 1, or negative root 5 plus 1. And that is what you would get. I'll do one more example with that, because as I said, this bit is new. So solve x squared minus 6x minus 1 equals 0 by completing the square. So again, just complete the square. So half the coefficient of x, so you get negative 3. So I've got x minus 3 in brackets squared. Square that, you get 9. So take that away, and then leave the negative 1. Negative 9 take away 1 is negative 10. From there, you want to get down to x on its own, so let's start undoing this. So add 10 to both sides, remove the 10 over. From there, you get x minus 3 all squared. Undo the squared, it means square root. And again, you need the plus or the minus. So you've got plus root 10 or minus root 10, so just put in that in two separate parts. On the left-hand side, we've got x minus 3. We want to get x, so you'd have to add 3. So adding 3, you'd have root 10 plus 3, or you'd have negative root 10 plus 3, and that is what you would get for x. So as I said, just a quick summary of how you can solve your quadratic equations using those different methods. Give this page in the Heinemann book a shot. You're using uh, everything you know to try and solve the quadratic equations. Good luck, have fun, enjoy. 
Bye. Woohoo.